I'm both an ecologist and a, and a, and a businessman buying and using timber. So, you know, I see many points of view, including my client's point of view. A forest, you could think of it as having like a stool with three legs. The first leg is direct economic value of the timber. So that's, of course, to the forest owner, if it's private owner or the state. And then, of course, how it is, how it is then manufactured, how it is processed. Is it just turned into cheap wood chips or is it then processed into something like a house? The second leg is the whole issue of uh, social and ecological values. So people uh, get immeasurable uh, mental health profits as well as direct profits from mushrooms and berries and so on, from nature tourism, from forests. Uh, and then we have the whole biodiversity issue. And then the third part of the thing is the whole issue of climate crisis. So forests play a very, very important role in mitigating climate. They fix carbon when they grow, but they also fix quite a lot of carbon in the soil when they grow. Uh, and so it's not just the trees themselves, but it's also what happens underground. And in fact, in our part of the world, in places like Latvia and Finland, two thirds to up to 80% of the carbon that is fixed is actually underground. Uh, so the big question is, well, how do you then take this into account when you're doing your forest match? So now in this case, uh, whether you cut down trees at a certain age or not is actually not the decisive thing, but it is relevant. Uh, even without any mathematics, it's quite intuitively obvious that if you grow your trees on average larger and cut them down less often, clearly on average you're going to have more carbon stored in those trees than you would if you cut them down very quickly all the time. But the absolutely decisive factor when it comes to carbon is, first of all, how much trees you have strictly protected. Because a forest continues to sequester carbon up to three, four hundred years old, especially in the soil. So they, 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 uh, you may hear from the forest industry that oh, it's very important to cut down old trees because old, old forests are not any more sequestering carbon, that they're, all the trees are falling down and they're actually putting carbon into the atmosphere. So we need to take those out and, and plant new ones. This is absolute and utter propaganda. It is absolute rubbish. It is perfectly true, of course, that carbon is sequestered faster by younger growing trees. But what is, of course, not true is to understand that the older trees are themselves a great carbon sink already. So if you cut those down and then, you know, turn them into whatever, and they're lost in, in a few years when their product life ends, you will not have increased the amount of, of, of carbon sequestered. You will have increased the amount of carbon in the atmosphere for sure. One thing that is not generally recognized, but is fact something that my company is working with and together with Finnish scientists and uh, which we have proven, the amount of carbon released from clear cutting has been grossly underestimated. The point is that, that the, the surface of the ground heats much more than the surroundings when a forest is clear cut and the surface dries and once it starts drying, out goes the carbon. In peat soil is even more complicated because it's non-aerobic because of the water there. So what you get actually when the water table rises up after clear cutting is you get methane, which is even worse, much worse. So clear cutting itself is from the point of view of climate control, an absolute disaster. I think that, that it is wrong not to address all these three legs on the stool simultaneously. If you take away one of those legs, the stool will fall down and will be useless. And that failure to address all these three issues at the same time is a huge mistake. And Finland and Sweden, because of the very heavy lobbying from the paper and pulp industry, are very kind of, uh, you know, commercial heavy in their approach. So we have a huge carbon problem with forests. Uh, we have a huge biodiversity problem with forests, which we are not addressing sufficiently well. And so in that sense, the Finnish and Swedish forest policies are, are not a good uh, an example to anybody uh, because they don't address these other pillars sufficiently well.